Welcome to the Avengers of Lord Paramount, Matha Martin of the Crown Island. So yesterday we started setting things up for our son, uh, our son's new wife there, Falsy Pine, to hopefully have... Oh, look, they've already had... Oh, right, they're the ones that had the kids together. Shit. Um, I, I completely didn't take into account that now if we push her claim, we've guaranteed to get this... To get this claim now, because of course his heir is, is H.P. Lovecraft, who is the successor to the Westerlands. That's cool. We've got the Westerlands in the bag. However, yesterday we were kind of handed a new opportunity here. In the form of, of our current character's wife getting her, her head sliced open and horribly dying mid-battle. What that means is we could instead go ahead and marry our current character off and push our wife's claim instead. If we flip the succession laws to elective... We could potentially pull in three kingdoms rather than just one. And let me show you what I mean by that. I've tracked down some characters here who have multiple kingdom level claims. I mean, Lady Lain, Lin, however you want to say that, has not only a claim on the uh, Seven Kingdoms of the Iron Throne, but also has um, a, 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 an inheritable claim on the Westerlands. She has a weak claim that will not be inherited on the Reach and the Trident. So even if we marry her, have kids, and flip over to Elective, the very worst case scenario is that kid... We're going to play as next generation who will always already have the claim on the Westerlands that we've set up for two generations for our grandkids. So that alone is already better than what we've got. And that's worst case scenario. That's if we don't push the claims on the other shit she's got. But that's one of the few characters I've got around. I've looked for better potential characters here to... Oh, God, she's inbred. Oh, shit. Um, I've looked for some other characters as well. So she, for example, has a strong claim on the Stormlands instead. Still has that claim on the Rich in the Westerlands. We've got Malara Okar, who has a claim on the Trident, can be inherited. The Reach and the Westerlands. There's, there's a good variation of claims we can get, because all of the Great Houses have all inbred horribly. Hence the inbred trait. The only issue is, to get any of these as marriage fodder, we would have to kill off... We would have to kill off their husbands. We would have to invite them to court. We would have to arrange a favor, something like that, to get them to our court. And then we would have to also marry them, have a kid, flip over to elective... The amount of effort that it's worth is probably not viable. I just wanted to point out that we could go ahead and do that. Bear in mind, we've already got the Westlands in the bag. I think getting the Westlands done first and foremost. However, the only reason I was trying that is that the Westlands and the Reach are back under one title again. So if we did marry her, for example, we could push both of those claims simultaneously, seeing as we're going to be going to the wall for the Westlands anyway. Although, in hindsight, they have a lot of fucking troops. Maybe we should go for the Stormlands first, then. Oh, they're under Dawn as well. Okay, so the only one that's really viable to attack, unfortunately, is start going into the Trident. Bollocks. Okay. My, my, my grand plan here has fallen apart. Of course, everybody's got two kingdoms here besides us. Maybe we could start pushing minor claims instead. Maybe we start going for border disputes. Maybe we start inviting courtiers, landing them in random places, and then, uh, and, and then pushing claims that way. I might have to go for that, you know? But like that one, we can push one of our vassals. So that we could go and grab immediately, expand out our borders, even if it's only by a small bit, and just sort of see what claims we can push. Like that guy. Okay, there's another claim right there. We've already got one right next door. Um, what about here as well? We might just have to launch a series of smaller walls. Like she would be a good one to give a landed title to. Wayfarer's Rest. Um, we've got Southstone here. You know, okay, so here's what we do with our current character. With this dude, we'll pick apart what's left of the Trident until either. We get enough to be satisfied that we can take on one of the bigger titles, like Dawn, Stormlands, or I think Rich Westerlands is always going to be out of our reach, but Dawn, Stormlands seems like the sensible one to go for. Pick up enough troops until that becomes viable. Then we could go along the route of marrying someone who has a claim on the Stormlands, pushing that and go for elective. Or, if we don't get enough troops in that time, we just go for and carry on the thing we've already set up for in the form of the Westerlands. We could just do both anyway. I mean, there's no downside to obviously doing both as well. So let's see how the wars in the Trident progress first. This will help bolster our realm. These are the treasures that we'll take when we've got that. We could even go for the Iron Islands in hindsight. Or maybe even the Veil. We could go for the Veil. But as far as I recall, we're still allied with them though, aren't we? Um, are we not? Oh shit, we're not? Interesting. Oh shit, so we can push Dutch Clans on them as well. I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't have enough troops to be able to do any of this quite yet. So... What have we got? We've got uh, 2,900 in terms of retinue. When they've reinforced for a bit more, we'll have a few more retinue troops. To be honest, our retinue troops alone, with a couple of mercenaries maybe backing them up, will allow us to go province to province doing these small minor wars. Um, see, she's only got 5,600. Let's go for it. Because we know as well that the King's Peace is only advisory. The Iron Throne can't actually demand that we stand down ever. So I'm going to change our rally point then, first and foremost, from Rosby to the Salshorn. And then we're going to press along and we're going to press whatever goddamn claims we can within the Trident to... God, they wanted 200 gold then, Jesus. 
whatever gold we can get in the trident to... Um, sorry, whatever claims we can get in the trident to help bolster up our armies. I think that's probably the safest bet. Exorcism. Oh, they're still trying to exercise this from what we got possessed. Sure, go on then. Oh, they actually got rid of it that time. To be honest, that's probably only a good thing if we are going to expand our realm by conquest quite a lot. The only downside to this, of course, is we're going to make a lot of enemies as well. We've done enough assassination over last episode to... Jesus Christ, what is that? My father was a drunkard. Oh, Jesus. That's <laughs> actually fucking horrifying. What's wrong with him? Um, well, Paramount Gorman has no legal right to demand this. Right, and of course, they can't even change the crown laws, at least not easily, because they're in... Um, they're in a regency right now. Obviously, if the queen herself tries to push it, that's a different thing entirely. But she has no power. And the council will just squabble amongst themselves. So we've got a really unique opportunity here to uh, to do a lot of damage. This is why I wanted to use mercenaries, by the way, bolstering up our troops already. Because this is going to take a long time to uh, get our troops together, go for the invasion, get our troops together, go for the invasion. It's, it's going to take a long time. But it will definitely be worth it. Because it's the only real way we've got right now to... Uh, face anyone down, because the big boys are just way too strong for us. Rhaegar Martin. Targaryen blood? He is Targaryen blooded. Rhaegar Martin, a distant relative. Um, my father... Oh, so our nephew. Right, okay, got it. Uh, that's our, our sister and our distant kinsman's son there. Um, oh dear, I hope he's not prone to accidents. We want to be careful we don't bite off more than we can chew with some of these wars then. I would hate to accidentally lose a lot of our troops by fighting someone who's got a lot of allies, for example, or in this case, hires a load of bloody mercenaries. Um... Let's be a bit more cautious about how we progress on. Sure, I'll owe him a favor so that no one else bothers us. <laughs> Should be the only reason I'm doing that so we don't get notified every five minutes about voting on this, voting on that. If we're, if we're influenced by a favor, then they should leave us alone. Let's get on with our wars for a little bit. Shit, they just hired more troops. Okay, let's stop this army before it gets out of hand. Um, have we not got any better commanders now? Let's see if we can hire some better commanders. I think I actually made our... Our good commander from last time. Look at all the dragons, Jesus. Our good commander from last time, uh, I made our marshal, which was definitely the right play, I think. Um, but we will have to take him off of his current marshal duties to allow him to control the troops. And yeah, there is Hubbard the Proud. Okay, let's get you on the center. Then we've got Ossifer, who's also an organizer. Oh, shit, that's really good. And then this person... Hiccups already. This person, Ormond, has... What is that? Flat terrain experts. It's flat terrain? It's got to be, right? It's in the trident. Yeah, planes. That's actually pretty good. All right. See what damage we can do. Organizers allowed us to whip in there. Look at that. 5, 2, and 0 on their command. Jesus. Okay. That's pretty pathetic, I'll be honest with you. And we've got a better commander there, too. Obviously, it's a bit relevant right now that we're already in the battle. I can't believe they hired as many mercenaries as they have. They don't do that in the base game. They must have adjusted something in Game of Thrones wants to inspire them to do that a little bit more. Because it's so rare that they will ever hire mercenaries against in the base game to the extent that they would be able to put up a, a potential fight. Obviously, if we didn't have as good command as we would, that would be a... We kind of go into blows there a little bit. Bear in mind that we're also playing on very hard. Um, good shit. I guess we'll finish off the province that we started sieging. The actual war goal here. I might be tempted to assault this down. So that we can start reinforcing our troops. Although some of it is obviously right new anyway. Start reinforcing our troops and then move on to defend against this adventurer threat. When's he here? Um, another two years. Actually, we got plenty of time. 99%. Oh, come on. Maybe, th maybe this will be enough. There we go. Okay. Um, keep this information for myself. I don't want to piss off any of our vassals. Oh, did they just hire more troops? That's unfortunate. Boom. There's something. Okay. Good start. Good start. Um, oh, we can obviously drop our troops anywhere. Nice. Okay. Wasn't much, but it is like a little bit of a bonus. Right. So what about Butterwell? And we've gone to war against Harrenhal. Butterwell have nothing. We can border dispute them, but the amount of prestige that would cost. I don't think we've got enough piety, actually. That's a limiting factor there, right? Um, 300 piety. Yeah. So we haven't got enough. And it's 600 gold. So fuck that. What about Darry? It's war against Darry. We've got, again, border disputes. Not really interested in Southstone. Um, we can't declare war against because of reasons. No Valor Casabella at all. What about River Run then? We've got Branston for River, for, for one of our vassals from River Run then. 6,000 troops. Uh, Pink Maiden? Yeah, we've got the Stony Sept from Pink Maiden as well. It gives us a good amount of land, you know. It really does. Let's go for you next then. Seeing as she's got less troops than in, uh, than in River Run. Let's get our boys together. Now, I am going to specifically drop some of our troops just to keep a, a sort of an emergency backup force just in case those rebels come over to us. And so now we can actually set this new one that we picked up as our new rally point. Seeing as we're going to be going over that way for the most part. There we go. All right. Um, how brave you feeling? We could go down there, kill those troops before they reinforce. And then it would just be basically like 3,600 versus 3,800. Um, or sorry, 3,600. What is this? After long counts with me, my head is full of the latest expense reports. I like our sign, like our defeat building in me, but Perkin interrupts my thoughts. I don't know if it matters to you, my lord, but many are grateful for the way you're handling the surplus of men and women here in the castle. Ah. Oh, right. That's an event based on... Oh, shit. That's cool. Calculating host. Gives plot power defense plus 15. I enjoy everyone's company, dear Perkin. 25% chance of losing greedy. 
Um, generous host give monthly. So we've got the choice of plot power defense plus 15%. That actually seems to be pretty good. I might send your impo you're all important to me is all. 75 prestige. That's quite nice. But we will go for the 15 plot power defense. That's pretty significant. They are now movement locked. They are now movement locked going against our army with our insanely good commanders. Oh, the center did fall. Sent it fall, but we're okay. We're okay. That was very, very risky, I will admit. But I think it was still not. It wasn't an unsensible idea. It wasn't the best idea, but it wasn't it wasn't too terrible either. There we go. Relying, we, we are putting a lot of pressure on on Hubbard. I will admit, seventy five percent already. Let's get the war gold dealt with. Oh wait, it's two promises. Why are we taking two promises? Maybe this one's owned by Stony Sets. Maybe one of the sub holdings. Very weird. Um, you know, we will take out those troops. There's still twelve hundred men there. They could still do something if they get some more reinforcements very nicely handled okay 75 percent so i guess we'll start with st actually let's go for the capital fuck it turn that's apparently also part of the war goal go for the capital might encourage them to surrender a bit more when we get there as prisoner what are we looking at oh that was a lot of troops shit 96 percent okay we'll knock down the siege pink maiden we should be good 97 seriously okay fine we'll go for the actual war goal then damn the new guys are pretty bad treasure let's see if we can fear more you're a little bit better our Lord Treasurer is the one. Our Lord Treasurer and our Castano are obviously people single-handedly keeping this economy afloat. So I'm going to ensure that we're always keeping the best ones on hand there. And constantly keeping them collect taxes. And obviously that one has a chance at tithing as well. Very nice. Okay. This is going to be over in no time. God knows what that was that just popped up there. Was that a wildling invasion or something? Right, here we go. And you are done. Um, so we, yeah, we didn't get Pink Maiden. God knows why it showed that one. Did we get a castle there? Didn't even get a castle. I don't know why I considered that. Very strange. Okay. Drop the troops. I know, again, it's not much of an expansion. But it is a tiny little bit more. And that's the, that's the important thing. Just every tiny little promise is going to help add on to things here. We'll go ahead and claim Branson. Can we maybe do a couple of wars simultaneously and, and raise all our troops at the same time? We haven't got any claims there. We got any claims there. Uh, Blue Fort, unfortunately, none of those guys are our vassals. We could start fabricating some claims. That also probably couldn't hurt. Well, I think we've lost all our dishonor. Oh, shit, we've still got minus 20 on it. All right, never mind then. <laughs> Let's keep our justicia trying to trying to smooth over that first before we get a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're doing all right for claims still. We don't need to worry about that quite yet. Should have remarried our dude as well. Obviously, I was, I was trying to leave it open just in case we decided to go for claimants. Is there any claimants on the trident? Obviously, it wouldn't matter because the actual title of the trident belongs to the crown. And they're not going to dish it out now that we've picked it apart. Um, maybe a claimant on the veil. Maybe we completely change tactics and go for the veil instead. Who have we got? We've got Lady of the Veil, but she's on... Oh, she's at the wall. Fuck. Um, Lady of the North. She's married to the Lord Paramount. Um, what if we kill her husband off? Do you think we could summon her to our court? What's wrong with her? She is... Oh, God. She's dying. Okay. Yeah, there's no climates on the Veil that are going to be appropriate for that. Um, and how are we looking for... Oh, the Reach is split. Okay. Civil War. House Florent, by the looks of it. Yeah, House Florent are going in Civil War to probably take... So, Baylor's come on the reach. That's great news. So, they might be able to split them up again. And if they do split them up again, we can carry on with our first goal, which was, of course, to take the Westerlands for our grandson, I guess. Technically, our eventual heir. All right, let's go ahead and cut these guys off. They are movement locked. Should be able to... That should be a very, very safe battle. Pray for fertility or lose zealous. Okay. I mean, as minor... I mean, to be honest, I pay 66 gold just to get the fertility anyway, let alone to do it and avoid losing zealous. Um, we've got quite a, yeah, we do, we do genuinely have quite enough courtiers already. Thank you for the offer, but we're all good. And there he is, Edwin. Um, that's another one anyway. Uh, naming scheme, the naming scheme. Oh, shit. Um, good for her. Uh, so what have we got? We've got HP Lovecraft. We've got Tolkien. We're going to go for, uh, Stephen King. Stephen King Martin. It's, it's a little bit on the nose, that one, I will admit. Although I was thinking, if we just go for Stephen, that's a bit bland. If we just go for King, that's also a little bit bland as well. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see, we can't... Assault this one down because they've got a ridiculous sport level again. Preston hold fast. Why has the city got a higher formidable defense? Whoa, look at that. They've built some really interesting buildings. Like the, the AI in this game just seems a lot more, I guess, aggressive all around. You know, higher in the mercenaries. They, they seem a lot more sensible than the base game. Ah, it's like they heard me talking about them again. Lady Roncian of the Crownlands to marry the heir to the kingdom of them. Look, if we can't conquer them, we might as well have them as an ally, right? Um, so we'll go for that. I'm not going to go against the tyranny of the queen. Particularly when we've already made enough enemies of the crown by conquesting all these lands unjustly. What do you want, commander? No, you're alright, thank you. I appreciate these guys pissing away all their gold, though, on... <laughs> on mercenaries that are just going to get smashed immediately. That's quite funny. Right, we're going to go ahead and unsiege this one, and then we should be... There's another one. Okay. Our border's going to look hideous, I will admit. 
But as far as I'm concerned, the more map that turns pink, the better for us. Right, okay, let's go ahead and get you guys to the Stony Sept. Um, what are them seized? A oh, Waters, my kinsman. Targaryen bloodline, married a Martin. Oh, accept their marriage. That's fine. Like, it's keeping the bloodline alive at the end of the day. Okay, more importantly, even if we don't get the Westlands, we're going to get our bloodlines back as well. Don't forget, so that's pretty nice. Um, good shit. So, next then. Where can we go for? Where can we pass any claims against? Um... Weak claims against the Reach, yeah, I'm well aware. Um, claim the Westerlands for one of our vassals there. Obviously, that wouldn't help out too much. Who do you want to press it for? There she is. Press it against her while they're in the middle of the rebellion. We've only got 17,000 men. Holy fuck. Is this wise when we ourselves are expecting... Oh, our adventurous threat apparently fucked off. Do it. We've got 656 gold. If we need to hire mercenaries, you know, I'm going to preemptively hire a couple of bands of mercenaries as well. 27,000 men. We might have this in the bag. Um, we probably want to take out... What, where do you think? Should we go for their capital before House Florent gets to it? The last thing I want to do is lose the war because House Florent managed to dethrone them or something like that. But they should still keep the Westerlands. Because it's a thing to restore the reach, isn't it? Oh, thank you. That'll do. Uh, and what's our monthly balance? Minus three gold a month. Yeah, we've got a uh, hundred months of mercenaries. We're more than okay with that. As long as we don't have too many unexpected, uh... As long as we don't have too many unexpected costs, we should be fine. And we've got a new stone mason. Um, still minus 15, minus 15. I think we've only had minus 15, minus 15 this time around. And I will bring in the troops from Dragonstone now that we haven't got to worry about our adventurer threat either. Right, let's go for King's Landing. Let's build two different armies here. We'll go for 14,000 stat there. And then we'll get all of these boats together. We'll go and build another force in King's Landing. And if we keep our vanguard force, the one in the, in, in the front, with the mass of, of good commanders... Uh, actually, speaking of which, we need to assign those new commanders, don't we? If we keep the Vanguard Force with the best commanders too, we should be able to um, we should be able to deal with them even if they kind of have superior troops because we have some very, very good commanders here. Um, yeah, look at that. Holy shit, our commanders are insane, actually. Um, I'm going to keep this guy on board just because he's flat terrain and, and trickster. Right, okay. Let's keep you guys together. That gives us about two almost equivalent armies there. Incredible. Right. This is going to be a big war. So, let's take things a little bit slower than usual. Um, I'm just going to blitz through it here. Where are our enemy's troops? There they are. Are they heading towards us? They're heading away. We want to go to High Garden anyway. So, we're going to send you guys down first. And we're going to send you guys to shadow them. Now, we want to get to... What do you want? Oh, Hand of the King. Holy shit. Hand of the King of the Iron Throne. That's pretty fucking big. Because now she tells us to stand down. We can tell her to um, fuck off, basically. Because we're <laughs> Hand of the King. Uh, it's not, obviously, that... It's not that much power that we've been given there, but it is still fairly significant. The only thing I'm concerned about is the, the Florent Rebellion might actually end up gunning for us in High Garden. So let's take this very slowly. Um, I'll help Commander. Okay, so what we want to do then is make sure our best commanders are on this one. We're going to go for the army of the Reach. There they are. Actually, they're going to take some decent losses from that. Not really enough, unfortunately, to, um, to equal things up particularly. Let's try and avoid some of this... Some of this death as well. There we go. Are they movement locked? We're movement locked, but they're... Oh, now they're movement locked into us in mountains. We should have this one in the bag. 21 versus 9. 26 versus 18. 21 versus 0. They've got... To be fair, we've got more cavalry than them as well. They've got more heavy cavalry, sure, but... Uh, what are the differences here? We've got a lot more light cavalry. But we've got a lot more light infantry too. This is going to be a bit mixed bag, but bear in mind we've also got mountains, which gives 100% light infantry attack and defense. I think we're going to annihilate them. And annihilate them, we fucking did. Oh, shit. Okay, great start. Great start. Hunt their troops down. Siege and high guns going pretty well. We've got to make sure that those um, those guys don't cross. Oh, is that a river, though? Uh, between there and... What are we looking at? Smallwood? There is a river. Right, cool. And our organizers means that they're going to attack straight into us again. Those organizers really did pay for themselves in no time. Uh, Old Town, are you our enemies? Um, no, they are attacking the Reach. So let's avoid killing their troops off. Although, putting some of them in their place probably wouldn't hurt. We don't want them to be so powerful that they can steamroll the witch after we've weakened them up. We want to kind of play both sides here. Um, so let's go ahead and hit... I mean, the Westerlands is our war goal, right? So really, we should be sending some up to, like, Lannisport, Castelli Rock, the most the most important areas. Um, we can see it's just some of their some of their counties. That wouldn't matter too much. Okay. We've actually earned more money being away at war, strangely enough. So let's put some secondary commanders here. Our secondary commanders are still in Senegal 20, 20, 18. Wouldn't be surprised if our secondary commanders are better than their primary commanders. Now what I'm going to do is as their troops get distracted, we're going to move in and siege down 
take control of their sieges that they've initiated. That way, they're going to do all the hard work, and we can stop them winning their war whilst also simultaneously winning our claim as well. We're at 61%. What are they at? 64% in favor of Lady Olena of the Reach. I think we've got this in the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and kill some of these Reach troops as well. Um, we're losing Vassal Opinion because we're brave. To be fair, Brave already gives Vassal companions, so I'm not too concerned about that one, I will admit. All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and take this siege off your hands, if you don't mind. 69% war score is very nice and good. How are we looking with High Garden? That's going to take a while, but when High Garden falls, I have a feeling this whole war is going to come together very, very nicely. Um, let's go ahead and take that one. We're going to go ahead and take all these sieges off your hands. This, this is, um, this is great. This is so easy for us because they're already just kicking each other around, depleting all the garrisons. We're at 83%. Trying to take back that one, but we should be able to, be able to give him a bit of a spook there. Um, no, not now. Hopefully our commanders can hold that down. Yeah, we're good. Boom, look at that. 74%. Yeah, they, they've got, obviously, far more, far more armies than, than we have. I, I'm keeping these specifically two big death stacks. Oh, we're at 100%. What the fuck? Why? Um, Battle of Copper Cross. Oh, the occupation finish. Well, that's enough. That counts enough for an occupation. And then the Battle War score as well. Oh, those people we just fought. Their armies. Well, either way. Boom. We've done it. The Westerlands. Or not. Uh, wait, hang on. Let's actually try clicking on a province in the Westerlands. There she is. Falsy of the Westerlands. Is that our son? Why does he look so different all of a sudden? Why does he look so fucking different? <laughs> and then her heir. H.P. Lovecraft Martin. Wouldn't it be a shame if she were to... Ah, I'm gonna fall down a flight of stairs, perhaps. It'd be a shame if she were to disappear forever permanently. <laughs> okay, let's drop our troops. That was some good shit. That was that was really, really well handled, I think. Okay. Basically a flawless war. Turns out not blitzing through everything on speed five does have its merits. Okay. Um oh, people want her dead too. This is great news. What we've got to do is be very careful that we're not behooving too much on our dynasty too quickly. So so Samuel Ironwood has been a little unable to have been completely many tasks in the head of crown lines. We're seeming right and honorable to reward him. Um Sure. How much do you want? 150. Ah, uh, no. No, I'll owe him a favor instead. Uh what did she just say? You bitch. You absolute bitch. You changed the succession law before we could kill her off. Um Wait. Wait, she did what? Did she... She surrendered the Westerlands immediately? Oh, you absolute fucker. Well, okay. I will admit... <laughs> that's some premium bullshit. However, it's now a strong claim on the Westerlands, which will be inherited by her successor. Which will be... HP Lovecraft. At which point we just press the claim on behalf of his mother. Because she was the ruler of the Westerlands for a small period of time. That's enough to give him a claim or any of the grandkids, depending on which one we end up going for. They're all a bit crap, though. Let's take over education here. Then we need to step in and, uh, <laughs> and sort this out, because that's a complete mess. Um, yeah, okay. Excuse me. Sorry, HP Lovecraft. You've, you've come out a little bit shit. Um, let's give you to a good guardian. So we've got someone patient, diligent. She's pretty good. Patient, brave. Then downside she's got is... Um, Arbitrary. Actually, all of her traits are good besides arbitrary. She'll make for a good educator. Can't believe that. Immediately surrenders it out. But to be fair, we've got the strong claim. So as far as I'm concerned, that's uh, that's half the battle won right there. So we are going to still continue with the plot in hindsight to kill her dead. Uh, mainly because I'm thinking if we kill her dead, we'll be able to know for definite whether or not that claim will inherit down to him. It should. By all the rules of CK2, he should get that now because his mother was the ruler of a kingdom. So he should inherit the title. Um, the Iron Throne is asking for gold in exchange for a favor. What does she want? 500 gold. Fuck that. She already hates me. So what the hell have I got to lose at the end of the day? Right. 152% plot power. So annoyed at that. I can't believe she'd immediately surrender it out, you fuck. Oh, wow. They say it looks nothing like anyone imagined it, but the reports are saying it's true. Rala's found the fabled Horn of Winter. That's the one that can bring down the wall. Um, so if he blows it, I don't know what would happen. Would they destroy... I assume they would destroy the... Um, there's obviously this here. The wall. Gives plus one heavy cavalry? What? Um, but I assume they could just blow that and destroy... You, you can remove building. You just go up to the, the owner of the Night's Watch and then destroy all the buildings in his in, in the provinces there. Um, I assume that's how we do it. But honestly, I don't know. 
Because obviously you can't you can't remove the geological you can't remove obviously this geological feature, the actual wall itself. So let's see what happens. That's cool. I've never actually seen it before. More importantly, that should be enough to get Yeah, we go. We've got our ally we've, we've got our ally in the veil now. Um We've we've really done a number. Honestly, that was probably the right play, because look at how much we've split the realm up now. She was winning that war. It slowed it down a lot. It hasn't cemented it. But we have removed the Westerlands from her entirely now. She won't just get that back. That's, that's gone for good. They're just trying to depose her now. Um, is there anything we can push in the meantime? Go for something in Tumbleton for our vassals? We can. We actually can. Um, have they got anything in the Crownlands? They don't. But there's no reason we can't just grab it. They've only got 10,000 men. Let's become a, a serial opportunist here. So let's go ahead and take Tumbleton. Tumbleton's obviously quite... Is the house of... Um, it is the home county of House Florent, right? Let's go ahead and grab that one. That would be a nice little addition to my new empire. And then we could see if the Westerlands is anything as well. Now, granted, we are going to take it in a couple of generations, but it couldn't hurt just to give it a go. Hey, there's minus 10 Dishonor, and she's about to die. Well, there we go. And Joraman blew the Horn of Winter and woke the giants from the earth. The legends are truer than anyone imagined. Rollis found the Horn of Winter and blow it. And blow in. The wall is in danger, and it seems though every raven in the north flies south to warn us the wildlings are coming. Dark wings, dark words. He has blown the horn of winter. What the fuck does that even do? Um, apparently it gives the Iron Islands to... What has that even done? Uh, Is it spawned in giants, perhaps? Let's take a look. Pause, keep that shit paused. Um, gi giant. Uh, reset all. Uh, sort by, what do you think, Marshall? I have no idea what that's done. Um, it's searching everybody, isn't it? It is. Uh, Healer of the Burned Men. That's a fucking cool title. Um, yep, I'm not seeing any giants here, I'll be honest with you. God knows. I have no idea what that's done. Is that actually destroyed the wall? Um, you know, I think it, it did exactly what I said it would. They've knocked down the wall. Look. All the wall portions are gone now. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I thought it might do that, and they, they've done exactly that. That's a, that's a good idea. Fortunately, falsely avoided the arrows, but it doesn't matter. We've, we've already won the moral victory here today. We've got the foot in the door. That's the important thing. Oh, she's gone. <gasps> and we got away with it. Holy shit. Okay. Um, glad I hired that random fella. Um, Stephen King inherited her province. Oh, no, wait. He's got the giant stairs? What the fuck is the giant stairs? He got, he got given a landed title up in the furthest regions. Or the third most northerly province there. Well, I guess you can't do that one. It's a bit more. But not, like the fifth most, sixth most northerly province of the entire world. Brilliant. Oh, that's really fucking helpful. Thank you for that, you shits. Um, I want to check, though. Just make sure. Yes, he did. He, he did inherit the claim. It's only a weak claim, but it's done a little bit of murder here and there. Couldn't do it. And he's got seven marshal, too. So he might make for himself a good fight, despite the fact he's got affectionate idolizer and haughty. Those are some of the worst traits. Some of the worst childhood traits. Unfortunately, HP Lovecraft might not be where we put all our eggs. Um, I might flip to elective, or HP Lovecraft might take an unfortunate tumble off of a boat. Wouldn't that be appropriate if we got him killed by a, by a kraken? Um, I will personally come say Lord Allen and hopefully gain just... Hey, there we go. Amateur steward. That's fine. It's not really what we're after, but we've got plenty of gold to spare for fr frivolous pursuits. Uh, what have we got in terms of commanders? 2021. 20, you know, the war has been that harsh on our commanders. And we kind of sort it down for level 10 over above. Yep. All right. Wait. Hmm. What's a succession law? Sorry, I went very Yoda then. Hmm. I <laughs> smoke too much ketamine I have. Agnatic cognatic primogeniture. You don't say. We've got the Westerlands with one kid. Imagine if Lord Robert, one kid becomes Lord of the Westerlands, one Lord, one kid becomes Lord of the Reach. It's going to be difficult to pull off, but I'm going to give it a go. We will have to move in and back her up. And unfortunately, we won't be able to call in the, um, we won't be able to call in the Veil on that one, because that'll be a, a war that we're being called in on. But if, if she'll accept it, no. I've changed my mind. So the Game of Thrones mod, to its credit, does come with slightly more intelligent, um, slightly more intelligent matrilineal marriage. A child has gone missing, and it seems everyone suspects me. That's not very cash money. That's really fucked up. Never mind. We'll find him a, we'll find him a different successor. Um, but to be fair, we could go for uh, someone else who has a claim on the Westerlands. Oh, sorry, the Reach this time. We've obviously already got the claim on the Westerlands. Um, claimants, who we got? She's actually wanting to come to a court. She is 43, though. Let's sort by age. Go for someone slightly... Good God. Yeah, no, we won't struggle to find someone here. Fucking hell. 
Um, Maya, lost tool, bastard. We claim we'd have to push it. No reason we couldn't push it right now. We've already beaten them once. Why not again? Join me. Maya Waters. What's she got? Blood of Garth Greenhand. That'll do. Uh, marry her off to Robert then. We genuinely could fulfill the, the ambition to have a kid on each throne. That would be so cool. Let's see if we can pull it off. Um, you also stole Dragon Kin. I assume that's a book rather than like an actual man. Uh, yep. Because Valyrian Opinion Month Prestige. Not too interested in that one, I'll be honest with you, but that's alright. Um, okay, here's what we'll do then. Morale of armies. Because we're, we're, we're going to have a smaller army than most realms anyway. Um, we can't assault this place with fucking shit. Okay, never mind. With 1,000 dudes there. Um, oh, I'm a favor. Let's kill their troops. They're moving a lot to where? Hammerhull. Move over. Kill them dead. Now, the bonus to this is, of course, those are the guys not only that are going to give us this province, but those are also the guys who are leading the rebellion against the Reach. We can then move in and ensure that that rebellion isn't going anywhere and keep the Reach nice and weak for us to move in and crush them dead. Oh, never mind. Oh, my God. What's happened now? Did she revoke the Westerlands too? There's going to be no fucking Kingdom level titles to go. Oh, look at this mess of a realm. Well, it makes it easier for us to pick apart. Well, in some ways, it makes it easier to pick apart. We can't now push our clan on the Reach, which is a little unfortunate. <sighs> yeah, that's a bit of a pain in the ass, isn't it? Damn it. Well, there goes that dream. The starts to... Oh, God. Did she just take the... No way. I thought she took Dawn as well. That would have been pretty funny. Right, let's go for these troops. That should be enough then to... Um... Septim Benedict was disappointed with the secluded ceremony that my leader organized for a coronation. Oh, fuck him. Who cares what the Septim thinks? All right, let's go for these troops. That might be enough to end it without having to siege down. Unfortunately, without unlimited siege assaults, we're going to be here for a very, very long time just to take a random inconsequential province. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Very nice. Give me that. All right, there's another one. Ironically enough... We've become one of the most powerful kingdoms now in Westeros just from throwing everywhere else into complete fucking chaos. Besides Dawn, we're up there now. And we've proven that by defeating the Reach, Westerlands, everybody. Oh my god, she gave it to a Baratheon. The absolute unbelievable nepotism that's in this throne. Thank you all for watching. Then. I guess we'll leave that one here for today. I'm blue through today, mainly because we were uh, we'll see a little bit entrenched in some of our warfare. Tomorrow, we will see if we can begin pursuing some more. I, I want to make it so that within a couple of generations, we can have... It would be kind of cool to set up so we've got everybody on every throne in the realm. That would be pretty fun to 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 pull off. Hi, everybody. Of course, I mean, our, <laughs> our grants is there. I wasn't, wasn't particularly clear on that one. Thank you to, importantly, our insane top-tier level patrons for making the channel possible in the first place. Again, these months more than ever whilst we are in lockdown, thanks to YouTube's less than stellar advertising. Thank you to Limpy George, Cyric313, Scary Scurvy, Necrophil, and Paul, Crow Skull, The One Ring, Huey Longdong, Silkworm, Alchemia, Blue the Lazy Archer, Derek, Justin Wallace, Chris, Pelvis Presley, and everyone else at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon as well for making the channel possible in the first place. Big thank you to you guys for supporting the channel during this time. Thank you. Let's give a shout as well to Nick, Demon X Jester, Genji Zerka, Emperor Caligula, Cam, Mason Fireblast, Demon Haji Dumar, Kevin Sanders, Prometheo, Super Nanny 089, I see the great Kamara Ishmael, Peanut Gorilla, Dranmir, Panther Pearl, Tofu Ten, and everyone else on Patreon as well for supporting the channel during these times. Again, it is much appreciated. I can't overstate that enough because it is a complete. It's 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 hell out here. It's hell out here.